Today I'm at all that remains of Szent Király Zabodja in Hungary. During World War II, Hungary fought alongside Germany during Operation Barbarossa, all the way to Stalingrad. The tides turned, however, and by 1942 the Soviets were pushing back, fighting Hungarian troops all the way until April 1945, capturing the capital, Budapest, in the meantime. After the war, Hungary found itself in the Eastern Bloc, as a satellite state of the Soviet Union. The Soviets made sure that the post-war government was majority communist before transferring any authority over to Hungarian government. Even after this transfer, Soviet forces remained within the country, with tensions occasionally flaring, such as when hundreds of thousands of Hungarians were sent to labor camps in the Soviet Union. Of the estimated 600,000 sent, 200,000 would die, and survivors only returned after Stalin's death in the early 1950s. Hungary was the hardest hit of the Soviet-occupied countries who experienced deportations. One of the biggest events, though, was the Hungarian Revolution of 1956. What started as student protest exploded into full-on revolt of the Communist Party. Thousands of citizens joined the students marching on the parliament building. State security police shot at them, killing several. News quickly spread and the violence in the capital erupted. The government quickly collapsed while citizens fought state and Soviet troops. From 23 October until 4 November, the revolution managed to oust the Hungarian Working People's Party and were beginning to negotiate with the USSR about a withdrawal of Soviet troops. But then the Soviets changed their mind. They straight up invaded Budapest and other tumultuous areas. And within six days, they had crushed the revolution. But even as these scenes were recorded, rumors flared of the re-entry of Russian forces and new fighting. The beautiful city of Budapest, scarred by conflict, again faces a Russian onslaught, even before the debris of the fight for freedom is cleared from the streets. In startling developments, Hungary broke with a satellite Warsaw Pact military alliance, announced neutrality, and pleaded for priority on the United Nations agenda. Then word came that Russian forces were massing, and all communication with the West was cut off. Hungary's newfound freedom is menaced before the martyrs of revolution go to their rest. A new Soviet-installed government retook communist control at a cost of 2,500 Hungarian lives. 700 Soviet troops and 200,000 Hungarian nationals fleeing the country as refugees. Soviet forces would remain until the collapse in 1991. And that all brings me here to St. Kirai Zabodja, one of the 60 army camps and 10 air bases built for Soviet forces in the country. In classical communist style, it features massive concrete apartments, utilitarian accommodations, as well as a nearby barracks. The base supported the airstrip until revolution took down the Soviet Union, at which point the Soviet troops departed the base around 1991. Around 50,000 troops left the country, their families in tow, leaving 500,000 tons of equipment and 5,750 buildings abandoned. Afterwards, the Hungarian military based a unit of tanks and a squadron of helicopters here, but even they were restationed or laid off in 2004. The structures are all that remain now of what used to be an entire community. Apartments, restaurants, schools, theaters, even a slaughterhouse. All crumble alongside hangars and depots, all being slowly reclaimed by the Hungarian forest. If you'd like to support the channel directly, you can check out my Patreon in the description below. It'll help me going to more obscure places and you can get early access as well as behind the scenes content. Either way, thanks for watching, and as always, until next time, get lost.